the TVM solver in the TI-84 plus financial calc, well, in the TI-84 graphing calculator, which has financial calculator functions, will allow you to get the uh, answers to lump sum and annuity problems. To access the uh, TVM solver, we would press the apps button and select finance, the top menu item. So the cursor is already on that, so I'm going to hit enter. And then you will select the very first item on that menu called TVM solver. I'll hit enter. And you see here that there are, uh, you have the full screen of variables for you to enter values into. Let's suppose that we want to use this so that we can calculate the future value of $100 in a, an account that earns 10% a year and you keep it in there for five years. A few things to uh, make sure about before we uh, enter values is that make sure that these bottom three terms are like what you see. So the periods per year, which is P slash Y, compounding periods per year, which is C slash Y, should both equal one for every one of your problems. And very importantly, you have the end highlighted there, not begin. If you see, um, if you see it look like this, where you have begin highlighted, go down, use the cursor to go down there, put the cursor over end and select enter. You need it set to end because that means the calculator will interpret the cash amounts you put in as occurring at the end of a period, which is how we do almost all of our problems in finance. Uh, and actually I would argue you can convert every problem uh, to be understood in that way. Now, uh, so if we were to calculate the future value, we would uh, enter the number of periods for n. So I have the cursor over n, hit five, enter, down arrow key to the next, start, uh, or I guess the enter put me down there to the next one anyway. Um, then interest rate uh, in our problem is 10. Note that it does have the percent sign, so we are indeed putting this as a percent. The 10 per if it's 10%, you're putting in one zero. Uh, we can use the down arrow key, and I'm gonna start with $100, so 100. I can hit enter or down arrow key. I'm gonna leave the default value for payment at zero. PMT stands for payment. The PMT would be used when we're dealing with annuities. That's when you have multiple cash flows in the future, uh, not just one. But right now we're dealing with just one, and that's called a lump sum. So I'm gonna go down, make sure that's left at zero. And now I'm ready to solve for the future value. To tell the calculator I want the future value, I need to have the cursor at future value and press the green alpha button and then enter. Very important, alpha, enter. And it returns a value now, it says negative 161 0.05. So this means that the future value of the $100 five years later at 10% is $161.05. Now the calculator adds the negative sign in front of the answer because this is the way the calculator thinks. The future value of a positive number does have to be positive, but the calculator is adding the negative to convey that if you receive 100, since we put in 100 as the PV, you will have to pay 161.05 in five years. So it basically puts the problem in the real world. I mean, it's interpreting our positive 100 up front as receiving a loan, and it would say this is how, what you would have to pay back. So you could say that, in a sense, the bank where you're depositing the money is borrowing your money and then it's gonna to have to pay you back 161.05 in five years when you withdraw. All right, well now let's turn to how you would deal with a stream of cash flows. Um, now if it is a constant amount, then that's where the PMT comes in. But if it's not a constant amount, where there's, um, there's a, it's a different number each period, then we're going to go back to the menu 
So let me quit. I'm going to do a second quit to clear out. And I'm going to press apps again. Select finance again. And now I'm going to scroll down to number seven, which is NPV. Enter. And we see a mostly blank window that just has NPV parenthesis. We're going to enter the arguments for, for the net, uh, net present value problem within the parenthesis. And of course, you'll have to make sure you enter the arguments exactly the way the calculator expects you to. The first argument will be the interest rate. Let's presume that the interest rate in our problem is 7, 7 percent. Uh, again, uh, like the TVM solver, the interest rate is a percent, so you put in just 7. Next, you would put in a comma. The next argument is the period zero cash flow in the problem. Let's suppose that our problem has a cash flow at period zero of negative 100. So I need to use the negative sign, not the minus sign. So this button in the lower um, row with a parenthesis around the negative is the one that I'm going to use. So you see the negative showing up, and then I'm going to put in 100. Then I'm going to and press the comma button. Now for the period one cash flow to the end, I have to add another set of brackets. So I'm going to use this blue second button and press the parenthesis because above the regular parenthesis you see there's the blue uh, curly bracket. So I'm going to have this curly bracket within that list the rest of the cash flows. So let's presume that the next three cash flows are 50, 75, and 120. Now I have to close two sets of brackets. I will close first the curly bracket by doing shift, close parenthesis, and then I need to close the first set of regular parentheses by just pressing that parenthesis button. And now I'm ready for the answer. Uh, before I hit enter, I want you to notice um, a very common mistake is to leave out the a comma there between the period zero cash flow and the bracket. So make sure you realize there is a comma between the period zero cash flow and uh, the bracket before the first cash flow. And then we press enter and we see the answer uh, to the net present value of this stream of cash flows is $110.19. All right, finally, let's find the internal rate of return of a cash flow stream. So let's, I'm going to back up, press, press on apps again, select finance again. So leave the cursor on finance, hit enter. And I'm going to scroll down past NPV to um, IRR. That's option eight there. Enter, and we see a screen that looks very similar to the NPV screen, except it says IRR parenthesis, and we're going to list all the cash flows exactly as we did with NPV. Uh, by de IRR doesn't use an interest rate; it is going to give us a rate. So the first argument will just won't be a rate. So the first argument is to be will be the period zero cash flow. So that was negative one hundred. Again, make sure you're using the negative button, not the minus button comma, curly bracket, and the cash flows were 50, comma, 75, comma, 120. Close the first set of brackets, and then close the second set of brackets. Hit enter, and we see that the internal rate of return, or IRR, of this uh, a stream of cash flows is 51.64%.